Dork Lair. Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Mythic Legion's Argamedes the Cyclops from the Wasteland Wave. So this is on the big nine inch um, ogre scale body and it really is impressive what a simple head swap and then different paint applications will do to transform a figure. Just an incredible release. The blue is amazing. The paintwork is awesome. Just an awesome, awesome figure. So yeah, I am super pumped to have this guy in my collection. Um, I also reviewed Cassia so far from the wave, so you can check out that video as well. But anyways, let's get into this review. So a quick look at the box. Um, it's the same box as the other ogres, except that of course on the side, it's gonna have your bio right there and then a picture of the character wrapping around to the back but the artwork is incredible on here uh so good nate barch artwork um so yeah so this is the same box i do like the box i think i kind of prefer the box over the over the um you know the clamshell type thing but pretty sweet packaging you know you got um the demon guy there azok or i forget his name but yeah so really cool stuff here take a look at the bottom as well taking a look at the sculpt paint and details on Argamides, the eye is really nice it's super clean um it has a glossiness to it but also like that very supernatural kind of coloring as well it even looks good from the side really nice the teeth also stand out to me as as painted um very skillfully they just look like nasty uh ogre teeth and he's got like wrinkles and stuff so he doesn't look like some youngling or anything like that um you know chief overseer of the forges of erethir should be around for a while so he definitely has some age there one of the things that you'll notice about these ogre scale figures is if the head is tilted down you can see that ball joint in the back so uh, from the back, you might see a little bit, but once you tilt the head back up, it looks fine. The paintwork on the, the body, the torso, is incredible. It has sort of that lighter shade on the front and then darker shade for the rest of the skin. Um, and then that lighter shade kind of goes under the arms as well, too. So, very cool. Just really nicely shaded into the body. The, um, the removable harness piece has lots of little details little metal rivets it's got that very iron looking finish to the to the metal looking parts and then a leathery finish to the to the straps and stuff so that looks awesome those same kind of details come down on the on the waist piece here a lot of the same kind of paintwork going on that huge buckle in the middle with the big medallion got the bones hanging down here Similar thing going on with the gauntlets. This is all one sculpted piece. It is a removable piece, so he could have bare forearms if you take those off. And then he's got this skirt down here that's sort of a fur kind of a material. It does come apart a little bit. Like you can see little pieces like just sort of pulling off like that piece right there. Um, so you got to be pretty delicate with it. Their cloth is not usually like super high quality. I think it's one of the the things that they could improve on because sometimes the fur is just coming off but look at that dry brushing on the on the um, greaves on the legs there even his toes have some different shading and you have that lighter color on the bottom it's almost like sort of ape or gorilla like the way the way the shading is on the chest and like the feet and the hands and stuff it's pretty cool but the sculpt and paint is amazing the, the details on this guy are phenomenal um that is really the highlight it's, i mean i can just kind of pan the camera around him and you can just see for yourself how good this figure looks okay i'm going to start off the comparisons with the other ogre scale figures so first is bolthor the tower and then the ogre himself um kurzog he's a little hunched over because i got him in a pose that i really like but um yeah this is a this is a little subline that's coming along very nicely. Moving on to a couple figures on the like 1.0 body. Here's um, the, the deluxe knight legion builder. And then here is Deltagar, the destroyer. And you can see how he pretty much dwarfs the 1.0 figures, which are actually pretty large. 
And then a couple 2.0 bodies um, here from the same wave is Cassia and the on the Goblin build is um, Thistlethorn. And finally, from a couple other lines, here's the new He-Man figure from the movie from Super 7. And then here is Mezco 112 Collective Aquaman. For accessories, there are some removable parts already on him right here. So this chest piece can come off. It's got these two little pieces in the back and you just kind of peel them off right there, these two holes. And then this whole piece comes right off. So, um, so that chest harness is technically an accessory. And then the other thing is that his gauntlets, his hands come off nice and easy, um, but his gauntlets will come off and then you can pop the hand back on and you can have a bare um, arm like that too. So, you know, technically those gauntlets are uh, an accessory. I don't call this an accessory because if you take it off, it just doesn't look right, but the belt is removable. Um, so you could swap out with the other figures. That's just the sculpted leg. And then he's got this helmet right here. This is a pretty soft um, plastic and it fits on his head well. Let me get this on his head and refocus over here. So kind of goes on nicely. Just kind of sits there, doesn't peg in or anything like that, but you can see how that works. And he's got the same axe as the other, as uh, Bolthor the Tower. So I think it's painted a little bit differently because it's it's got um, more of a gray scheme with some of that bluish, but you can get a look at that. And it comes with a few different attachments. You can kind of pull it apart and make it different lengths. So you could pop this part like that and then just turn it into like a short one if you wanted or um, you know other other modes and that's pretty much it he doesn't really come with much but you know when you kind of add it all up he's got the the gauntlets the the harness the weapon the hat or helmet and so you know quite a few things and then of course this new head sculpt is just stunning as for articulation his head is on a ball joint it can kind of rock around it can look up this much and down just a tiny bit there it's a little tricky when you move it to the side because it's always cocked so his head's always cocked because of the way the you have that really big muscular neck there so it prevents him from doing a sort of a straight side look but not too bad it's hard for him to look to the side and down is basically what's going on there so the shoulder has a hinge and swivel and the shoulder will hinge up this far my right shoulder this one here is actually really nice and smooth um it's a little looser this one's a little bit tighter it's a little tougher to, to articulate but not too bad i did heat my figure up because i know that these uh ogre scale figures are they're they're very tight i think they do that so that they hold their own weight when you're articulating them his arm can swing all the way around um single jointed elbow can come up this far And then back down one cool thing about these guys is that there's a little sort of flap here in the back that allows you to hide the articulation there a little bit um, and then of course there's a swivel at the top the figures do tend to lose some paint because they paint the joints i'm not sure why they paint the joints i kind of wish they didn't but that happens pretty regularly with mythic legions Keeping the gauntlet off here, the you can see the articulation a little bit better in the hand uh, when you have it off. But um, you know, there's a hinge, and then the hand will rotate. When you're on the hand, when you have the gauntlet on there, it's going to be a little less uh, of a range of motion, and the hand's going to want to pop off a little bit because these pieces here are starting to try to like force it off a little bit. And then going into the waist. It's got a really nice ball joint that goes up into the torso, so he can crunch forward quite a bit and then back quite a bit. You will get some gap if you're not careful with the way you position the, um, the skirt or the belt there. Um, his legs can kick out to the side pretty much almost to 90 degrees. Uh, there is a swivel at the top and look, you can see a little piece fell off that just keeps happening where this fur keeps falling off. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh and then the knee joint comes up this far. So pretty limited in the knee there. Um, and there's a swivel below the knee and then down at the feet, there's some nice ankle rockers and he can point his feet down this far and back up just a tiny bit. And then the feet can 
swivel as well. Mythic legions aren't known for their articulation, so you know some of the limitations in the knees and the elbows are very common. Like you kind of know what you're getting into with mythic legions, so I don't really knock them for that. So there you have it, Argamides, an incredible addition to the ogre scale range. I can't wait to see what they do next with that, uh, with this body type. I know that they have been teasing this like guy with like this crazy horse head. Um, that would be really cool to see them produce. Uh, they're also doing their All Stars 3.0 voting. I think uh, probably ending about the time of this video. So. You know, if you see this video when it first goes up, you can check it out and see if you can get in on that voting for the All-Stars. There'll probably be an in-stock sale at some point for the Wasteland Wave. So if you're looking for this figure, don't get too crazy with Aftermarket because hopefully they will um, put that up for, for sale uh, very soon. And thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Dorklair. And until next time, may the Force be with you.